Mohammed, let's bring you back into this. I know um, you're not quite in LA, I don't believe, but that's a little bit closer to home for you. Um, when we hear about Jess and, and sort of them debating in Congress what the best way is to um, address all of these issues, what do you think? And, and even if they do pass some of what's been talked about, paid sick leave, et cetera, how much does that really um, help with the economic blow that comes from closing everything? So the reality is that there isn't much you can do to soften that blow. What you need to do is to protect the most vulnerable members of society and to protect the critical sectors. And also, importantly, lay the foundation for when policy can become effective again. So I think it's important to have realistic expectations. As I said earlier, do you think we would change our behavior if we got a tax credit? We won't. If we get a check in the mail, we'll just save it. Will it help balance sheets? Yes. Do everything you can to help balance sheets, but you're not going to be able to get people to re-engage in economic activity until you restore confidence in the health situation. I actually was encouraged by the indications that came out because it's an important first step, and it's important that we have the two parties coming together. I just hope that it's followed very quickly by a clear plan as to what phase two would look like, what phase three would look like. Mohammed, Dan Howley here, you know, you were talking about uh, the, the shutdown, the potential uh, full stop of uh, restaurants and, and that kind of aspect of the economy. What happens, though, to those restaurant owners, to the movie theater owners, uh, the people that run those businesses, if they have no income because people simply don't go when they're shut down? Does the government step in and provide them with a means to sustain themselves until the economy can start chugging along again? So we have a leading indicator of all this done in the airline industry. And what you get is simultaneous demand and supply destruction, which is really scary. You get this usually in failed and fragile states, which we're not, or you get it in a community that's been hit by a huge natural disaster. So what happens? Step number one, people demand less. So in the case of restaurant, we go less to restaurant. In the case of airlines, we don't fly anymore. United announced a 70% decline in reservation. Stage two, which comes very quickly after stage one, if not simultaneously with stage one, is that airlines cut flights, cut capacity, and they lay people off. British Airways today just announced a massive cut in capacity. What does that do? That cuts somebody else's income and demand. Right? So that's why this is so scary. And that's why it's really important to prepare ourselves for this notion of a sudden stop. We've seen a financial sudden stop, and ironically, financial sudden stops hit you harder up front, but the central bank can come in and say, well, if you don't trust each other, trust me, I have a balance sheet in the, ba I have a printing press in the basement. You can't do that with economic sudden stop because of fear. When you talk about sudden stop, I've just got to bring up, you know, Louisiana has now postponed the Democratic primary that was scheduled in that state. We've got Florida, by the way, on Tuesday. No word. Uh, I mean, they've not postponed yet. Is this the kind of thing? Do we create a feedback loop of fear? Does it play into some of the conspiracy theorists who have all kinds of ideas about what's really at play here? We've never been here before with both supply and demand destruction at the same time, at least not since the Great Depression. When you hear that Louisiana is going to delay its primary, at least the Democratic primary, what are your thoughts? So I think as a society, we are overreacting. But I have been talking nonstop to doctors over the last six weeks. And they said, you know what, when you look at type one and type two error, overreact or underreact, you overreact. Because the consequences of not overreacting is that our hospitals are gonna be flooded with people. We don't have enough beds. We don't have enough doctors. We don't have enough tests, okay? So we need, to, we need this social distancing up front. So if you tell me from an economic perspective, yeah, we're totally overreacting. If you look at the probabilities involved, they're small. But the medical profession has, a, I think, a very strong point, which is, can we really underwrite the risk of underreacting? So it's really hard, and that's why I cited up front this contradiction that people still don't realize between the right phase of the medical response and, and what it does to the economy. 
Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.